Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. This time I'd like to talk about the different levels of culture. So first we've got world culture. These are things that all people, no matter where you live in the world, share. Uh, major cultures, which are generally thought of in terms of regional or national groups. Uh, subcultures, which are just simply a very identifiable cultural group within a major culture. Uh, and then we'll wrap it up with corporate culture. World culture uh, really is an expression of things that all of humanity uh, hold in common. Uh, for instance, uh, all cultures more or less uh, have marriage uh, in one form or another. Um, and people have families. And sometimes people die uh, and they have funerals. And people have birthdays, and birthdays are celebrated in different ways with different significance uh, around the world in different cultures. Um, and as well, there are gender roles in the various cultures. Uh, and these things do vary from culture to culture. But those are things that humanity has in common. And sometimes when you're trying to learn more about uh, cross-cultural issues, uh, you, of course, want to focus on the things that you share in common. So you can start with conversations about your family and your job and uh, things like that. And it gives you a way to bridge that gap, to start beginning some understanding. Now, regional and national culture, you can see here a map of Central America. Um, this is a regional culture versus just a single country. But there are many factors that we could list here uh, that really speak to why this is a regional sort of culture. They share many things, in particular, the Spanish language, uh, also a fairly similar climate and environment, uh, a fairly similar economic condition, um, a fairly similar uh, historical background, and so forth. So regional or national cultures are really good examples here, like this one, Central America. Uh, of course, culture doesn't stop at national borders, and that's why it's good to look at it from either perspective, whichever works for the uh, thing that you're examining. Here's some basics about regional culture. Some of them I've mentioned already. Climate conditions might be a commonality. Uh, natural environment resources. Um, the background and history, uh, various immigrant groups that might have gone to any one of the particular areas within the region. Uh, and then political things, of course, and social things that have happened. Um, but depending on the area of the world and the time span and all of that, uh, you are going to find some commonalities that do draw people together and they share a culture that really goes beyond just their national borders. And of course, we have subcultures. So just to take that metaphor even farther, we could say that each of those individual nations within Central America, which is a collective sort of a name for about 11 or 13 countries, is really just a way to look at a variety of subcultures that share a lot of commonalities. But here are some subcultures that make more sense to us, I think. Uh, here you can see the horse and buggy. This is a uh, particular thing you don't see in a lot of parts of the country. This is a religious thing, right? Um, and I'm not sure exactly which uh, religious groups do this. Um, but when you see it, you know what it is. It's a particular subculture, and it is a religious one. Here on the other side, we could also have a subculture that's rooted not in our religion, but in the things that we like and that we share, our activities. And so here's one on the NFL. Uh, but of course, uh, we, we can't exclude ethnicity when we talk about subcultures. And here's a picture of uh, Chinatown somewhere in America. Uh, it's hard to tell. They all look so very much similar with their uh, neon signage and their bustling activity and, uh, and all of that. Um, but definitely ethnicity is one way to uh, express uh, a subculture. And then, of course, uh, we have corporate culture. Corporate culture is something completely different and all its own because this is the collective thing that we share in our organizations where we're working. And when we're uh, in the business world, if we want to be effective, we really need to be aware of and able to react to all levels of culture uh, in a way that uh, moves us forward. So an organization within a major culture um, 
sometimes there are many subcultures within that organization. And so you do see that in many companies. Um, but we also see some interesting things that uh, the people who found a corporation or a, a long lasting company over time, those uh, organizations usually do display the culture and the thinking and the beliefs of the founders of the organization. And so certainly Southwest Airlines uh, shows the uh, thinking and the beliefs of Herb Kelleher, although I believe he's still with us. I'm not sure about that. Um, but then we look at an organization like, uh, say, Walmart. Uh, Walmart, uh, originally founded by Sam Walton, he had a certain very egalitarian look at life and values. And today the company, uh, many people would argue that, you know, they don't seem to have much of Sam Walton in them anymore. But usually we do see that. So corporate culture is also as complex as any regular uh, subculture. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, for American business, the world that we all operate in, it is definitely dominated by the Euro-American white male. And so we get the managerial and leadership styles that that, that cultural group has used over time and so forth. Um, but this is also changing because organizations and so forth have been uh, really changing over time uh, and uh, become more not so dominated by that style, but more willing to look at different ways of doing things. One thing I'd like to wrap this up with is looking at just a, a few basic remarks on gender as a cultural group. Now certainly how gender and gender roles are handled is really going to vary uh, amongst cultures around the world, um, but it exists. We do have different roles for uh, men and for women, and in, by the same token, we have different roles for fathers and mothers, and they different uh, they do different role playing and, and act as role models in different ways uh, because the genders are different, obviously, um, and so this does influence people, and this is something that does that mental programming that uh, helps shape us into the individuals we are. But today, because of technology uh, added together with uh, increases in communication and globalization and all those factors, media has a huge influence on culture. Not only does it disseminate it uh, more widely than ever it would have been in the past, um, we see it in our entertainment, uh, in our news, uh, it is all over the internet and so forth, it does uh, influence people. So it does cause people to reflect on things and think about them in different ways. Okay, folks, that's all I want to talk about this time. I'll talk to you again soon.